Okay, so moving on to section, chapter 14, section 1, we've got our trigonomic identity. So what we're going to be looking at here is we're going to be looking at how they are relationships between our trig functions. And we're going to look at one main one that's going to help us with everything. So if you look at our unit circle, okay, uh, what we've discussed previously is that you see there's some relationships, numbers repeating themselves, Okay, they're either just switched or they're um, they're switched or the signs are di changed, something like that. But one thing that we do have with all of these, if you were to draw kind of you know triangles with every single one, every single one of these triangles is a right triangle. Okay, so every single one's a right triangle, and what's the hypotenuse of them all? Well, the hypotenuse of them all is one because the radius is one and so you can't have it any longer or shorter than one which means that if we square our x and y values they will always equal one in our unit circle which means our trig functions also agree with that when we square them we should always equal one when we find the sum basically like a squared plus b squared equals c squared a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay. Now, if you see how the cosine and sine kind of have their squareds attached to the actual word sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, yada, yada, yada. And the reason for that is because this is easier to understand that you're squaring the whole thing. So what we're doing is we're taking the cosine of theta and then we're squaring the entire function instead of writing it like this it might be interpreted that we're just squaring theta, which is wrong, okay? So that's why we write it over here because uh, it's easier so we don't get confused. Um, now there's three here, and these are always true. So you have cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to one. You have one plus tangent squared equals secant squared. One plus cotangent squared is equal to cosecant squared. All these are true and they're actually all the same because the very first one, what we're the first one is our original, and then after that what we have is that we are taking each of the following and we are dividing it by one of our trig functions. So the first one is being divided by, everything's being divided by cosine squared. Okay, So if we divide this first function by cosine squared, we end up with 1 plus tangent squared equals secant squared. If we divide everything by uh, sine squared, we end up with 1 plus cotangent squared equals secant squared. So they're all based off of the same thing, just slightly different, okay? And these are all true. And you could also manipulate them. You can move the sine squared over so you have cosine squared is equal to one minus sine squared. Um, all those are true. But those are the identities that we're gonna end up using. So now let's say we take this and we wanna verify. So using these identities, what we're going to do is we're gonna be verifying these functions. And when we're verifying these functions, what we're trying to do is we're trying to prove that one is equal to the other. Okay, and so we're going to focus on one side of this function. And so we're going to focus on, I think, the left-hand side. So we're, yes, we're focusing on the left-hand side. Now there's a whole bunch of stuff that just popped up. Now, in this first row, okay, right here, and this row right here, what I've done is I've changed the tangent squared into sines and cosines, okay? So I've changed the tangent into sines and cosines. You can kind of think I'm changing it all into x's and y's. And so when I convert it into x's and y's or sines and cosines, I'm left with sine squared over cosine squared because sine over cosine is tangent. So sine squared over cosine squared minus sine squared. Now, in the next row down, okay, I wanted to get everything in a common denominator. So since I have a cosine squared for the first one, I want a cosine squared for the second one. So I multiplied this second equation by cosine squared over cosine squared. Okay, so I multiplied it cosine squared over cosine squared. Then since I have a common denominator, what I can do is that I can just put it all under one fraction. So now down on this third line, I have sine squared minus sine squared times cosine squared all over cosine squared. And now the rest of the way from here, all we're doing is that we're just kind of reducing. And what we want to do is we want to try to convert it into that. That's the goal, 
So since they both have a sine squared, I've removed the sine squared, and that's how I got to the bottom row. So I've removed a sine squared on the bottom, giving me sine squared theta times 1 minus cosine squared theta, all over cosine squared theta. Okay. Okay, so there's my original. And so this is where we left off on the previous slide, was at this top one. Okay, so I've removed that sine squared. Now, 1 minus cosine squared is sine squared. And the reason for that is because cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. So now if I wanted to solve for sine squared, subtract cosine squared, subtract cosine squared, getting me sine squared is equal to 1 minus cosine squared. And that's always true. Also what's always true is cosine squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared. Okay, so these are two other identities that are based off of the Pythagorean identities, and it's just solved for different things. So I've used this top one, and I've replaced 1 minus cosine squared with sine squared. Now what I've done is I'm going to just put this, it's being multiplied, so I can take this and just attach it to the first part. Sine squared over cosine squared gets me down to tangent. So now tangent squared times whatever's left over, which is sine squared. So what's, being hap what's happening here is that we are reducing our functions okay, to get our answers. And that's what we're doing. Okay. Uh, usually you want to start with the one that looks more complex because it's easier to simplify something down than to build it back up. Okay, It's easier to break it down than to build it up. Um, and the ones you're going to have, usually you're just going to need the Pythagorean identity for those. Okay, Okay. so now, next thing we can do is simplify. So when you're simplifying, all you're doing is you want to convert whatever trig functions you have and convert them into sine and cosines because we, can, we deal with everything in sines and cosines. So secant is 1 over cosine, which I'm just going to use as c. And we're multiplying that by cotangent, which is cosine over sine. So now when we write it like this, when we're multiplying it, and we combine it, and we reduce it, what can be reduced out of the top and the bottom? Well, we can take a cosine out of the top and bottom, leaving us with just 1 over sine. And looking back at our reciprocal, what is 1 over sine? 1 over sine is Uh, cosecant. So 1 over sine is equal to cosecant, and that's all we have to do with simplifying. So when you're dealing with simplifying, turn everything into sines and cosines, and then reduce from there. Um, and then once you get a reciprocal or something, or a tangent, use those. Okay, so make sure you have all those written, all our identity changing 